Star Trek has always broken new ground across its many series and films, but one of the most fascinating elements has got to be the so-called Mirror Universe. Ever since Captain Kirk managed to find himself in the Mirror Universe via the episode Mirror Mirror, evil doppelgangers have been mucking up Starfleet, and they continue to do so. For the most part, a Terran duplicate is truly antithetical to their Prime Universe counterpart. For example, Kirk assassinated Christopher Pike to take his place as the captain of the ISS. S. Enterprise, and he was a homicidal maniac. Over the years, the Mirror Universe has been visited, or its denizens have visited the Prime Universe numerous times. Deep Space Nine had quite a few run-ins with Mirror Universe counterparts. There was even a crossover in Enterprise, which placed it canonically earlier than Kirk's experience. Because it's so much fun to reimagine a good character as evil, the fans have their favourite versions of Mirror Universe characters. There are tons of them across multiple series, but which is the best? This list aims to find out by looking over every Mirror Universe episode to find the best evil doppelganger, whether they have a goatee or not. With that in mind, I'm Ellie with Trek Culture, and this is 10 Best Mirror Universe Characters in Star Trek. Number 10. Empress Hoshi Sato The first foray Starfleet took into the Mirror Universe may have come in the Star Trek episode Mirror Mirror, but canonically a crossover occurred a century prior during the events of Enterprise. At that time, the Terran Empire wasn't as developed as it would be in the 23rd century. Terrans had conquered numerous species including the Vulcans and Dorians and others in nearby space. Commander Jonathan Archer served as second in command of the ISS Enterprise before taking command of the USS Defiant, a starship from the Prime Universe that came from the 23rd century. When this happened, his communications officer, Lieutenant Hoshi Sato, came along with plans of her own. She seduced and poisoned Archer, taking command of the Defiant herself. She then proclaimed herself Empress Hoshi Sato and took over the Terran Empire with her technologically superior starship. While the TV series exploits of Empress Sato ended there, her story continued in a Mirror Universe novel. The Sorrows of of Empire detailed how the Sato dynasty continued for more than a century through the use of binary clones of the Empress. This effectively left the same person in command, as the clones were nothing more than copies of the biggest narcissist in galactic history. Number 9. Vok Vok was one of the most interesting Star Trek Discovery characters across both the Prime and Mirror universes. In the Prime universe, Vok was first shown as a zealot driven by his faith to establish a theologically unified Klingon Empire. In the Mirror universe, Vok was known as the Firewolf and was the leader of the resistance that challenged the Terran Empire. He was first encountered by Michael Burnham from the Prime universe, who was posing as her doppelganger. Her interest in meeting him was to learn how to work with the Klingons to end the war. When Vok answered her questions, Lieutenant Ash Tyler flew into a fit of rage and attacked Vok. It would later be revealed that Tyler was in fact Vok from the Prime Universe. His violent reaction was the result of his disgust at seeing himself cooperate so freely with other species. Burnham and Tyler were allowed to return to the ISS Shenzhou before Emperor Philippa Giorgio's arrival aboard the ISS Sharon. She bombarded the planet's surface, ultimately destroying the Resistance base and killing everyone who had yet to evacuate, which included Vok. Number 8. Captain Sylvia Killy Tilly In the Prime Universe, Ensign Sylvia Tilly is a friendly and energetic young Starfleet officer devoted to her crewmates. Over in the Mirror Universe, she's as antithetical a character as humanly possible and is known as Killy to her enemies. When Prime Tilly learned of her counterpart, she described her saying, I'm nothing like her, Michael. She's terrifying. She's, she's like a twisted version of everything I've ever aspired to be. I'm going to have nightmares about myself now. Captain Sylvia Killy Tilly commanded the ISS Discovery after killing her former captain, which is a common way of moving up in the Terran Empire. She was especially gifted at torturing prisoners for information or for fun, depending on her mood. Though she wasn't seen much in Discovery, her story continued in Star Trek Online, where the ISS Discovery was brought forward to the 25th century and into the Prime Universe via an ion storm. She dealt with a mutiny and some other issues before heading to the planet Parvan to convert Crystal Towers into powerful weapons. When she stopped, she transported herself to an unknown location, and the ISS Discovery is said
sent back to its proper timeline. Eventually, it swapped places with the USS Discovery and was destroyed. Number 7. Miles Smiley O'Brien In the 24th century, the Mirror Universe is quite different from its prime counterpart in various ways, but the biggest differences hinge on Deep Space Nine. The space station Terok Nor is run by the Klingon Cardassian Alliance, which is staffed primarily by Terran slaves. Miles O'Brien was working in the Ore Processing Center as a slave under the classification Theta. This earned him some respect among his fellow slaves. His position also made him available to repair Benjamin Sisko's radar whenever he docked in at the station. It was Sisko who hated the name O'Brien, so he decided to nickname him Smiley. When Julian Bashir crossed over from the Prime Universe, he convinced Smiley to aid him in his escape. He did so on the condition that he go with him, but ultimately opted to remain and join Sisko's crew. Eventually, Sisko was killed by the Alliance, which left Smiley the leader of the Terran Rebellion. He later crossed over to the Prime Universe to steal the plans for the USS Defiant, which made it possible for the Terran Rebellion to take control of Terek Nor. He remained the leader in command of the space station, and later he negotiated the surrender of Regent Worf. Number 6. Captain James T. Kirk James T. Kirk rose to power as the captain of the ISS Enterprise after assassinating his superior officer, Captain Christopher Pike. He then proved his devotion to the Terran Empire by destroying the Gorlan Uprising by destroying the Rebels' homeworld. After this, he executed 5,000 colonists on Vega 9. Kirk was aided in his command thanks to his possession of the Tantalus Field, a device he stole from an alien scientist. Kirk could vaporize anyone who challenged him from a far with the Tantalus field without leaving any evidence of his involvement. This made him all but unstoppable. He crossed over into the Prime Universe due to a transporter wobble, and he found himself aboard the USS Enterprise as its captain. It didn't take long for Spock to realize that the captain wasn't his Kirk, so he imprisoned him. Eventually, Spock was able to recreate the accident and exchange the Terran Kirk for his own. When Kirk returned to the Mirror Universe, Spock relieved him of his command and learned of the Tantalus field. He then gained the loyalty of Lieutenant Marlena Moreau, who had been Kirk's woman. Ultimately, Kirk's downfall was his counterpart's fault, as Prime Kirk pleaded with the Terrans to change their ways. Number 5. Captain Gabriel Lorca In the Mirror Universe, Captain Gabriel Lorca was one of the more prominent members of the Terran Empire. He commanded the ISS Buran when he attempted a coup against Emperor Philippa Giorgio, which failed. He escaped and became a fugitive of the Terran Empire, as he was wanted for treason and the murder of Michael Burnham. He escaped into the Prime Universe, where he assumed the identity of his counterpart. He was later appointed the captain of the USS Discovery, which he used to his advantage, thanks to the experimental spore drive. He recruited Michael Burnham to his crew and began manipulating events to his advantage. He managed to get the USS Discovery into the Mirror Universe. He established Burnham as her counterpart by masquerading the Starfleet vessel as an Imperial starship. Burnham claimed she faked her death to capture Lorca, bringing him in for the Emperor. Through this ruse, Lorca managed to place himself in a position to directly challenge the Emperor once again. With his deception at an end, the crew of the Discovery managed to return to the Prime Universe, but not before Emperor Giorgio killed Lorca, ending his attempt at assuming the throne. Number 4. Regent Wharf Worf was the Klingon regent responsible for the Klingon Cardassian Alliance, which made him the de facto chancellor of the Klingon Empire. He was in charge when the Terran Rebellion in 2372 resulted in the loss of Terok Nor, a shameful event he longed to correct by recapturing the station personally. He captured Garak, the station's former second in command, who convinced him that Intendant Kira Nerys was responsible for losing the station to the rebels. He locked Garak in a dog collar and used his intelligence to challenge the space station. However, the Battle of Teroknor ended in an alliance defeat. Believing he had been betrayed, as this was the only possible reason he could have lost, Worf became enraged. Garak once more blamed Intendant Kira Nerys, and the two began plotting to capture her. They succeeded in 2375, when the Intendant and Zek from the Prime Universe were both captured. Worf was promised a cloaking device, which was something the Alliance lacked in the Mirror Universe. He let Zek go, but Rom sabotaged the tech before it was given to the Regent. His flagship was completely disabled by the cloaking device, leaving him defenseless when the ISS Defiant captured him. Number 3. Spock 
Mirror Universe Spock answers the question, how do you make an emotionless man look evil? Throw a goatee on his face. Other than that, Mirror Universe Spock was similar to his prime counterpart in that he was loyal to his captain at first. He warned Captain Kirk of the Terran Empire's order to have Spock kill him and assume command if he didn't attack the Hulkans for refusing to negotiate with the Empire. Like his prime universe counterpart, Spock managed to deduce that his Captain Kirk had been switched with his counterpart from the prime universe. He then came up with a plan to return Kirk and his pals to the prime universe by exchanging them with their counterparts. Before Kirk left, he suggested that Spock use logic to see the fault of the Empire, asking if violence was the only answer to maintaining power over the galaxy. He then revealed the Tantalus field to Spock. Eventually, Spock became the captain of the Enterprise, and he used the vessel to build his influence to rise to the position of Commander-in-Chief of the Terran Empire. He instituted reforms, reforging the Empire into a more peaceful one. Ultimately, this left the Empire unprepared when the Klingon-Cardassian alliance rose, resulting in the conquering of the Terran Empire and the enslavement of humans and Vulcans. Number 2. Intendant Kira in the Mirror Universe, Kira Nerys was in a great position of power as the intendant of the space station Terok Nor. She rules over the Terran slaves with an iron fist, as she was a ruthless and uncompromising dictator who never shied away from violence or brutality. Depending on her mood, she might round up and execute Terran slaves, or she might seduce them. She was particularly fond of Benjamin Sisko, and even allowed him to maintain a ship as a raider. Of course, she took tribute from anything he stole, but their relationship wasn't to last. Sisko eventually turned against the Intendant and formed the Terran Rebellion. This led to the loss of Terok Nor and the ire of Regent Worf, who believed his failures were the fault of Nerys. Eventually, she was forced to bargain for her life, managing to facilitate the delivery of a cloaking device stolen from the Prime Universe. At the time, Nerys was imprisoned on the Regent's flagship, which was preparing for delivery of the cloaking device. When it was installed on the flagship, alterations made by Prime Rom compromised the ship's systems. This left it vulnerable and available for capture, though Norris managed to escape via a shuttle. Number 1. Emperor Philippa Giorgio of all the Mirror Universe characters seen throughout the franchise, Emperor Philippa Giorgio is by far the most developed. Her Prime Universe counterpart was killed soon after appearing in Star Trek Discovery, but thanks to an attempt on her life via a failed coup, she was brought to the Prime Universe. Her Most Imperial Majesty, Mother of the Fatherland, Overlord of Vulcan, Dominus of Quonos, Regina Andor, Philippa Giorgio Augustus, Laponius Centarius, yes, that's her actual title, commanded the Terran Empire with ruthless brutality and uncompromising violence. She managed to fight off numerous coups, but she found herself in unfamiliar territory once she was in the Prime Universe. Her threats were often shrugged off by the crew of the Discovery, and she managed to do some good for Starfleet. She helped bring about an end to the Federation Klingon War, and she helped defeat Control. Once the Discovery was taken to the 32nd century, she began showing signs of temporal trauma. This was the result of being both out of place and out of time. She was aided by the Guardian of Forever, who tested Giorgio by seeing how she would function upon being returned to a pivotal moment in her life. She proved she was willing to change, and the Guardian of Forever returned her to the Mirror Universe, though it was at an unspecified place and time. And there you have it, the 10 best Mirror Universe characters in Star Trek. If your favourite wasn't mentioned in this list, then we'd love to hear who it was in the comments below. And while you're there, like, subscribe, and tap that notification bell. You can also head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. Once again, I've been Ellie with Trek Culture. I hope you have a wonderful day and remember to boldly go where no one has gone before.